Hey everyone, I'm Doug. And I'm Wit. And we are the, the Stream, Stream Team. Team. <laughs> We're talking about Wit's absolute favorite topic today. Audio. Audio. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to help her to understand a little better so she's a little more comfortable and doesn't fear it quite so much. So. Yeah, I, I took audio a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> People don't seem to care if you got bad video. If, it, they'll the care if you good. have bad audio. But they will care if you have bad audio. Definitely. For sure. And yeah. I've always been told you have people are just accustomed to audio and hearing good sound. Mm -hmm. So if it's bad, they notice it right, right. away. And it's usually yeah. irritating. Yep. So we're going to do what we can to fix that. So. <laughs> We've got Hence a whole pile stuff. of microphones. Can we see those on? Sort of. Yeah. There's, there's a whole bunch of microphones hiding back here. And we'll we'll go over what some of these are. Um, mm -hmm. But we're, audio is such a huge topic, and we're not going to be able to get very far into this. So we may have to readdress some of this at a in a future video. Um, so it's like everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this one especially. I mean, because there's we could do an entire lesson just on how to create a mix. Yeah, so the basic principles, so a um, little bit about different types of mics, and then we'll cover how to hook up a mixer very briefly. <laughs> and, uh, and then an another lesson will cover some of the more advanced topics that will help you get a really good sounding mix. So, okay. Yeah. This thing scares me a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of buttons. Yeah. I, that's probably pretty common, actually. But if keep in mind that this is just six copies of the same thing or five copies of the same thing over and over and again oh all okay. you all you have to that's, learn is one that's, that's channel scary. they call this a channel strip you learn one one channel strip you know how to operate all the rest okay. they're, all, they're all the same so got it yeah that's nice okay <laughs> <laughs> so let's actually talk about a couple different types of microphones um okay. so because live video can cover a huge different type a huge range of different types of events there's going to be different types of microphones you use for different things mm -hmm. so like for example a microphone like this um you might a singer would probably use something like this you might find it used in a podcast but you probably wouldn't find necessarily find like someone doing a lecture necessary and help hand holding a mic like this or whatever you know is that the cardioid this is a cardioid yes <laughs> it's also a dynamic <laughs> dynamic cardioid okay so let's talk about what those terms actually mean so um there's two different types of main ways that microphones actually pick up sound so the one's called dynamic which actually has a magnetic coil inside of a magnet and the movement of that mag magnetic coil is actually what creates the electrical signal that comes out the, the bottom Okay. The other type are condenser, and this is a condenser mic. So we we'll call it a large diaphragm because it's got a huge pickup thing in there. Mm -hmm. This is a condenser, and condensers work by having two metal plates that are parallel and are very, very close together. And they put a, the microphone puts an electrical charge on there, and then any time those plates move, it varies that electrical charge. Like the closer they get, the stronger the metal the, the charge is, and they move further apart, they get uh, it gets it gets weaker. And that's, that's how the microphone is able to pick up the sound. Condensers <laughs> uh, are, they have amazing sound quality. They sound amazing. Yeah. Um, there's some downsides. They're very, very sensitive. And also, uh, they are more expensive than the dynamics. Yeah. So, and they're, all, and they're not as rugged either. So, you drop this thing, it's probably, it, it could be done for. I don't Whereas, think I've ever used that mic in my life. Probably not. You know, it's this, not really in film. Yeah, this is the, more the sort of mic you'd find in like a recording studio or something like that. Okay. But the principles of this are found in other microphones as well. So I just get this out as a nice piece of reference there. So, you know, a Plus visual, visual cool. aid. Yes, yeah, it looks amazing. This is my one of my favorite mics, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so dynamic and condenser, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we'll now, see if I remember that. Yep. And then you mentioned cardioid. Mm -hmm. That's a type of pickup pattern. So what that basically means is, <laughs> if you look, at, if you were to look at the mic this way, it picks up the most sound here. But when you get up to the top, it doesn't pick up near as much. So the shape of the pickup pattern is shaped like a heart, which is where the word cardioid comes from, like cardiac. Cardiac. Rest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's what I think yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so what that means is, when you're if you're using one of these microphones, it's got to be pointed directly at your sound source. Because if I was to hold it like this and talk into it, you'd hardly hear me at all. Flip it around, and you hear me quite well. I don't know why anyone would talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. 
Why? What's the point? But but you use that when you're placing your microphones. You, you take advantage of the fact that it doesn't pick up much from behind, so you can have any sort of no room noise yeah, yeah. or other other sound sources behind the microphone, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the alternative to a cardioid is what we call an omnidirectional, and I don't think I actually grabbed one of those. This microphone actually has switchable pack pickup patterns on it, so you can you can actually make it omnidirectional, or choose one of the cardioid, or that we have. A hypercardioid and then figure eights. Where figure eights where it picks up from the front and back equally, but not much from the side. So some of your high-end mics actually have selectable patterns like that, but anyway, that's not, not super common. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never heard of that before, but... Yeah, it's more a stuff you'd find on a studio mic. Maybe I did, and I just tuned so, it out. But, <laughs> um, so omnidirectional picks up sound equally from every direction. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter which way you point the mic, it's going to pick up the sound the same. Got it. So, uh, most common type of omnidirectional mic you probably encounter little lavalier, yeah, little lavaliers like this. Almost all of these, not all, but almost all of these, are actually omnidirectional. So it doesn't matter which direction you point it when you mount it, when you put it on someone's shirt, that it's going to pick up the sound. So, Ooh. yeah, this one actually is a cardioid. So if you're going to use something like this, it has to be pointed the right direction, otherwise. You don't pick up much at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but almost all wobs are omnidirectional. Uh, the other pickup pattern. That's probably why I've, I know that term. That's the one I was thinking of that I always yeah. hear is omnidirectional. Right. Yeah. Use a lot and of the wobs. downside to omni is it does pick up sound from every direction. So, I mean, if someone's wearing yeah. one of these here and they've got the shuffling papers, you're going to hear that just as well as you hear them talking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it, it's best to choose a, a, the appropriate mic pickup pattern based on what you're going to be recording. So. Um, this is a shotgun microphone, so it has a very linear pickup pattern, so mm -hmm. it pretty much only picks up things that are like straight in yeah. front of it. And you find these, you won't find these necessarily used much in live work, but they're used in film all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what you tip, that's the kind it's of the standard. kind of all you use, Yeah, really. it's a standard mic for film work, right? Because mm -hmm. it does pick up, you put the mic above somebody, pick up just them talking. So. I know when talkies came out, mm -hmm. like the first film sound in mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. they used to put mics in bushes <laughs> and like other things and hide them because they were so big right <laughs> and then they'd have to talk really loud next to something yep <laughs> and that's how they did it <laughs> my how things have changed <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank goodness connecting microphones so almost all of these have remember what that's called xlr xlr connector yep mm -hmm. yep and these have been around since the early 1900s i think at least the 1930s oh. uh, um, it, but it works well, and yeah. it's very rugged, so why would it be bother changing? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we have XLR, plug in, and then, yeah, your mic's connected. So XLR inputs on the mixer as well, so just XLR to XLR. You, uh, occasionally there are some microphones that use this the quarter inch, which sort of looks like that, mm -hmm. but that tends to be really low quality, I wouldn't bother. I don't think I've ever seen that, really. Yeah, it's you find them on like karaoke machines. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it's cheaper for the manufacturer to build something that uses this than this. But while I'm talking about that, I should mention that the reason that these have three connections in there, it's what we call a balance connection. So one of the pins is kind of a positive, and the other is negative, and then the other one is a ground. And the, oh. So like. If the signal goes up to one volt on the positive pin, it goes to negative one volt on the negative pin. Doing it that way allows you to basically cancel out any noise that's coming on. It gets uh, picked up by the, the cable. Oh. Cables are basically antennas. If you've got a yeah. really long cable and you don't have a balanced connection, you're going to be picking up noise from like electrical uh, oh, circuits. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You're going to get like what they call 60 hertz hum. It's going to be a buzz. It's kind of in the background. So that's why we use balance, because it's able to get rid of all that and it's able to eliminate it. All right, um, we're going to go through the process of hooking stuff up and actually have you do it. So you know what's going on. So I pre-connected these, but I'm going to disconnect those, and we're going to actually go through the whole process. Oh, man. Actually, I'm going to leave this one in. <laughs> that one, this one is specifically so we'll be able to hear whatever we're doing here on our recording. But it has nothing to do with what's going into the switcher. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll set those aside for the moment. All right, so we're going to be going into this ATEM Mini. I guess you can see that. And it has on the back. <laughs> this is why I hate audio, because there's so many cords. Yeah. It's frustrating to me. Right, so the ATEM Mini has 
a one eighth inch connection on the back. Okay. All right, that's unbalanced. So oh. just as a point of reference. All right, so our mixer, we have XLRs going in for the mics. The outputs on this mixer are actually TRS. TRS. And so mm -hmm. we need to do, I'll give you the cables and you figure out how to hook it up. So there's a couple cables there. And here's another <laughs> cable here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, so the main outputs on this mixer are right up here. Are they just different colors because so you can just, differentiate yeah, where the you put reason. them? That's the, that's the only reason. reason. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, main, output main output left and right. Yep. So we'll do purple right. Okay. Perfect. Blue left. Yep. Okay. And on the other end of that cable, you have what type of connection? XLR. Yep. So that's those. That's actually a conversion cable. It's not just a like XLR to XLR right. or TRS okay. to TRS, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so from there. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have another so converter now you cable go. that converts. So it's a, that's actually a stereo cable. Does it matter which one? Red is usually right. And you plug I in. I put purple, yep. right? Yep. So we'll do right. Red, right, red, right. That's how you remember. Red, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> just because that's what that's normal, just the, yeah. normally people do. Yep. Yeah, and then the, the left can be white, black, whatever. There's no real official standard for that. Oh, so, okay. So, okay. And then from there, I'm going to connect into and our... And that eight, goes into the switcher. mini. Yep. So, okay. turn that around. And we're plugging into... Either one? Mic one. Mic yeah. one's yep. probably... Yep. Makes Kay. sense. Yep. All right, so Kay. that's the physical connections. and But unfortunately, that's not all you have to do. Oh man. So <laughs> that's why she hates audio. <laughs> okay, so there's actually two different um, levels of audio signals that you have to deal with. So there's what we call mic level and there's what we call line level. So mic level, what comes out of a microphone, right? It's a mm -hmm. very, very quiet signal and it has to have to go through some sort of amplification. And the mixers will do that. Okay. Uh, the output on a mixer is what we call line level. It's a lot, lot louder, like a thousand, more than a thousand times louder. The downside to that is, like, you have to know what you're connecting into, whether it supports mic or line, or if it's kind of adjustable. <laughs> in this, <laughs> in, okay. In this case, we're gonna go into the ATEM software, <laughs> and we go to the audio tab, and it has analog audio inputs, and you can either set each one to either mic or line. So, okay. So if you're plugging in a microphone directly. You would choose microphone. If you're plugging in a mixer, then you would choose line. Okay. So, yeah, so we've got line here. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, in that case, we should actually have audio coming into our switcher. I just need to plug in a microphone and turn it up. So, grab my XLR cable, plug it into the output, and then turn up the fader. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. You can see we've actually got some audio coming in on the mic mm -hmm. one input of the switch of the of the switcher there. Microphones have output levels that are kind of all over the map. They have what we call a gain knob on here. So if <laughs> <laughs> you see me smile, I understand that what that means. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so you're adding extra <laughs> gain. You're actually adding extra, extra level to the signal. So this okay. microphone's a little quieter than say this one would be, and so it's going to require more gain on there than you would this one. Right? Mm -hmm. Condensers always have a more powerful output than a dynamic. Okay. Just, just kind of the way they work, right? Because um, this is your voice is make, moving a physical thing, which is having to generate electrical signal, kind of like a motor in reverse, or like headphones in reverse, essentially. Mm. This one, it actually has electronics in there that are amplifying the signal before it comes oh, to the Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, you adjust your gain, set your level on your fader, and then we'll get into talking about equalization in another, in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> Again, there's a whole lesson just on equalization. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, equal that makes sense. Equalization is uh, one of the biggest keys to making sure you have a good 
good sounding mix. So you start with good microphones. Mm -hmm. Having a good microphone is really important. But if, especially if you're going to be combining multiple sources, you've got somebody singing combined with a, a keyboard or a piano or something like that, you really need to have some equalization in there so that those don't really step on top of one another. Yeah, I think I learned how to do that in Sony Vegas. Mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. <laughs> shows how old I am. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> uses that anymore. But I remember like trying to equalize everything and taking a really long time trying to learn how right. to do it properly. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of doing a very simple audio connection setup and getting it into your switcher. So yeah, so different switchers are going to have, like this one has eight, uh, eighth inch inputs. Mm -hmm. My big one has XLR inputs. Other ones have the TRS input. So it's just really a matter of getting the right adapter cables, mm -hmm. making sure that you're sending at the right level of signal, you know, whether it's expecting mic or line. And there okay. are devices that will convert between line to mic if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, but in school, I was A2 uh -huh. on broadcasting. Uh -huh. I, don't but think, I, I, I don't think they know what that, what that means. A2 so. is just the audio person who was down on the floor. So we would do basketball games, and I'd be down with the announcers, setting up the cables for their microphones, setting up all the cables for the audio on the floor. Yeah. And once the game started, I didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But before so many cables mm -hmm. i had someone help me and like they're have some of them are really heavy duty too i'd be like dirty yeah. afterwards i'll have to and, get like, out. i'll have to get out one of my old audio analog snakes <laughs> yeah like some of them you have to like sit down and like roll the cable the size of a basketball <laughs> and oh they'd be so heavy yeah. yeah so a2 is basically the the grunt that's the yeah. grunt work for audio so <laughs> and a1 is the person who designs the system and typically is the one that runs the, the mixer during an yeah and they're up in the booth yeah so I was pretty much by myself, too, yeah. doing it. <laughs> Luckily, I had a classmate that was really nice so and would help me hook stuff up. Just a couple other things <laughs> worth probably worth noting. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily tell by the shape of a microphone whether it's a condenser or... I mean, this one looks lo a lot like a lot of condensers, but it's actually a dynamic. Yeah, that's what I thought and it was. And you find a lot of mics that look like this, where you're, you're, you're supposed to talk into this side. This one is what they call an end fire. You talk into the end of this one. Well, why is it open? Um, that's actually part of the design in order to contour the way that it is this, is <laughs> picks this a complicated up. question? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. It, it, it controls the, the quality of the sound, essentially. So oh. if it's uh, open like this, um, you have way, way more control over how much sound from the back is rejected. I mean, it's, it's all complicated physics. <laughs> but, oh, but it, yeah, I hate physics. The, the design of it affects <laughs> the pickup pattern and it affects the frequency response. So, okay. you know certain designs are going to pick up more bass than others. So I should also mention, also mention that like the cardioid pickup pattern that most of these mics have, they get really bassy when they get up close. So let's see which one am I here. So if I turn this up and talk into this, it should sound really bassy compared to talking farther away. Mm -hmm. So just, just, an, just a side effect of the cardioid pickup pattern. Omnidirectional mics don't do that. That's only a cardioid. But it gives you kind of that a radio sound. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of podcasters really like that yeah and so this would make a fantastic podcaster mic in fact a lot of podcasters do use this exact mic so. i used it and she used it when she i liked it interviewed for the, that was fem regard where you use that right mm -hmm. yeah so. go follow fem regard on instagram they follow me witty film girl the podcast what she was on was actually just released not long yeah ago. it was just released you guys can go listen to it and then i'm gonna uh to well when is this coming out it will be <laughs> on my instagram profile when you guys see this um there'll be a video and that mic will be in it so you guys <laughs> yeah. can kind of hear how it sounds yeah. i just know the basics right right the yes. red line is bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. again another, when you're editing if it goes to the red line it means it's peaking which means the sound is distorted yeah thanks for bringing that up so we didn't even mention that. yeah <laughs> no levels so yeah. there you go make yeah. sure it, it doesn't go too loud or else it will sound really bad when yeah. it's yeah digital audio sounds out. horrible when it when it distorts when it sounds when it clips so yeah yeah so we'll, Green is good. Yellow, Green's just good. just going into the yellow is better. Mm -hmm. Going into the red, really bad. And so. I was told you're supposed to be around six decibels. Yeah, it Three? depends on what you're doing, but <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, it depends. Like for video, we actually set our audio levels a lot lower than you do in, if you're doing like live stuff. So six to t twelve, maybe it was twelve. Best minus decibels. Two, minus six, minus twelve. Yeah. Yeah, for your final edit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're doing actual live audio, you probably want to be lower than that so you can catch any 
Oh, anything yeah, that gets louder you don't and know. distort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because inevitably somebody's going to shout or you know, microphone goes in the feedback or something. Yeah, you know, all sorts of yeah. issues. So very true. So. All right, so one, one other mic that's not here on the table that we mentioned is these microphones that we're actually using to record this the show. And it's doing a lovely job of modeling it for us. Uh, these oh. are, for some reason, this is the most popular question. <laughs> I videos. even got asked it <laughs> on my Instagram, and I was like, what? Like, I don't, okay. Yeah, uh, the model is AKG C. 111 LP. I think that's the right one. So anyway, they are... That's another reason why I hate audio. It's just all acronyms. <laughs> yeah, well, that, yeah, all, all media. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. So, but, yeah. Uh, but these are omnidirectional condenser mics. So, yep. And this is the... The body pack. So the same. body pack. Yeah. So we're using AKG wireless. In this case, the WMS 4, 450 series. You're, you're on 450, yeah, so... I'm on 470. It's a little bit 450. newer. 450. Yeah. Oh, you gave me the older one? They work the same. <laughs> They're interchangeable. <laughs> and these just run off battery? Yep. Yeah. So wireless mics is, again, yet another show. <laughs> that's, a, oh, I know. That's a whole, that's a whole so thing. I d got one out here, and we didn't even have time to talk about it. But, so. Close enough, as long as they know what this, this is. <laughs> yeah. Stop asking us. <laughs> For me, so, at least. Oh, yeah. Well, I get asked more than you do, so. Yeah, you do. It's, it has literally been the most popular Even question. if it has nothing to do with what you're talking about, right. you're just right. like, what are those mics? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I was talking about a switcher. <laughs> <laughs> Video? What's that? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this time. So, okay. yeah. Uh, as she mentioned, please like the video. Please share with friends and coworkers. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So. Um, I haven't decided what we're going to talk about next, so I can't give you any sort of preview. <laughs> it's a surprise. Yes. Stay <laughs> very, tuned. Very much by the seat of our pants. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks, guys. See you later.